Stay on Ham Radio Q&A. We'll be going over some of the tools that we'll be using for our upcoming video on a solar power supply. So please stay tuned for more. Hi, I'm Joe, KD9CJX. And for Ham Radio Q&A today, we'll be going over some basic hand tools needed for an upcoming project. The sun is out, it's uh, almost 50 degrees here in Wisconsin in the middle of February and I'm itching to get outside. Uh, so I started working on a solar powered power supply uh, that I'll be using for some outdoor operations. Uh, what we'll be doing is looking at these hand tools, what to get, maybe what not to get uh, in preparation for uh, this video and maybe for some of your future projects as well. Uh, when people first get licensed and they think about their projects, one of the first questions they ask is, what tools do you need? Uh, you don't need a lot of tools, unless you're going to get very in-depth, uh, but some basic hand tools and knowing how to use them um, is definitely required. So let's take a look at what we have here. First up, something real simple, a screwdriver. Uh, it's probably got a couple laying around in your garage or your basement, maybe the toolbox. A handy uh, 11 to 1 screwdriver is something that you can keep in the go bag, uh, maybe in a go box, keep it in the car if you need it. But eventually, you're going to have to have quite a few screwdrivers, Phillips, regular, and you'll also probably need some smaller screwdrivers or jeweler screwdrivers like these, especially when we're working with electronics. Um, make sure that you have uh, an abundant supply. Uh, don't use them for prying. Don't stick them in anything that's uh, energized. You don't want to get killed. Uh, but just remember that, um, that have the right one. Uh, you don't want to be strip, uh, stripping off screws uh, or causing any other problems that are going to slow you down or have you go back to the hardware store to get new parts. Another thing that I like to have around when I'm doing any projects is a good pair of needle nose pliers. Uh, not only will these help you hold uh, a part or some other uh, thing uh, when you're working, they're great when you drop a screw someplace that you can't get your fingers. They come in a straight style like this, uh, curved or a 90 degree like this, and various different sizes, such as this. Uh, make sure you have a couple pair, just on, be on the safe side, uh, and it can make your work a lot easier. Another thing to have around, um, not just in your shack, but around the house, is a good pair of side cutters like these. Uh, make sure they are a flush cut, meaning that the blades come together and that there is no gap there. This will make sure that whatever you cut is a flat and flush to the surface that you're cutting to. These are really good for zip ties. Um, they're also great for opening packages. Uh, anytime you have one of those little twist ties and you're opening up a cord or something. Uh, and I'd use them for hundreds of other things around the house. Get two pair. Get three pair. You can use them. Uh, when you're doing electrical work, uh, whether it's just a couple wires for this upcoming project or something a little more uh, challenging, you need a really good pair of crimpers and probably a good pair of crimpers too. Avoid the cheapo pairs like this that you get at the home improvement store. These are junk. You know, get a good pair, stick with the name brands. Um, this pair here will do from 20 gauge to a 12 gauge wire uh, s stranded. It's got some crimping um, here as well with the cutting blades here. Uh, this is only about $15, $20. Not a huge expense, expenditure, um, but it's going to make your life easier. If you're doing anything with terminals, um, a good pair of crimpers is the way to go. Uh, they've got a longer handle so you can get more force. So, again, spend a couple extra bucks, get a good pair of crimpers. And last but not least, uh, one thing that you'll need as a ham, and uh, again, maybe need it uh, for other places as well, is a good, reliable multimeter. Um, I'm going to say a couple of things here. First of all, I'm an electrician, um, so I know what I like to use and I know how to use it. Uh, but you got to be careful with the multimeter uh, from a safety perspective. Uh, especially on energized circuits, it's a good way to get yourself killed. Uh, but uh, when used properly, uh, it's really going to help you troubleshoot and diagnose any problem that you may have. A ham probably doesn't need a top of the line fluke. Um, Three, four, five hundred dollars sometimes for a good meter. Uh, we'll do all those and a few other things. So, thirty bucks, you can throw it in a bag if you need it, and if you lose it, not the end of the world, but make sure you know how to use it. If you don't, find someone to show you. Now, you don't need all of these right away. 
you know, you may not even need them for all of your projects, but you may need to plan a little bit and think about what you're going to do and make sure you have the proper tools ready. Additionally, work safe. Don't forget about that. Safety first, second, maybe third. Keep it at least keep it in the back of your mind because uh, some of these tools are as simple and mundane as a pair of fire cutters, and they're sharp. Uh, like I said, a multimeter uh, on an energized circuit uh, could be a serious situation. So you definitely want to think about those things. Make sure that you're following all the manufacturer's recommended safety precautions. And please, if you don't know what you're doing, don't do it. Coming up on some future videos, we'll be building that solar-powered pack for summer outdoor activities. So I hope you stick around for those. And if you want to be notified when those videos release, make sure you click on the subscribe button below. For Ham Radio q and I'm Joe, KD9CGX73, and thanks for watching. One more time, because Michael should be doing his own videos. Not really, I just look a lot for punishment. <laughs>